The good news is you've got a great idea and you just can't wait to get started building stuff. The bad news is it's likely no one's going to see it and no one's going to use it. But don't let that get you down. This episode is about all the boring stuff that you're going to need to do and you don't need to take a lot of time to do this stuff to set you off on the right path. Welcome back to Build Stuff. I'm Jason Little and let's dive right into this episode. So there are some things that you can do before you even start thinking about a platform you want to use or the no-code tool that you want to use, stuff like that. The odds are the idea that you have has been rattling around in your head for quite a while, so you probably have a pretty good internalized vision and thoughts about how you want to execute this thing. This is a perfect opportunity to spend a little bit of time creating some personas creating a product canvas and really starting to think about customer market fit. And here's a bunch of things you can do in a very, very simple way that's going to help you get started. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you'll benefit from some of the visuals I'm going to show through this episode. If you're listening to this in your podcast reader, go to the links in the show notes and you'll be able to find all the things that I'm talking about. The first thing is think about the problem that you want to solve for the customers that you expect have this problem. And also think about how do they solve this today? And there's a great little tool called the Value Proposition Canvas that talks about pains and gains. Pains are problems that a customer has um, or an expected user and the gains will be what would they gain from using your solution, whatever that is. So as an example, here's the one that I used for a recent uh, piece of software that I built on Bubble. So I was asked to do a keynote for a conference and I was kind of in a space of everything's virtual now. You can go to a keynote anywhere. It's just people talking about and regurgitating the same things over and over again. So I wanted to do something different. So the topic was how can you get unstuck? So when you feel like you're in a rut, whether that be in life or within your job, what could you do to jiggle yourself loose? And I decided um, instead of just doing a talk and blasting some slides at people, I'm going to build a little tool that helps a community of people come together. And then it almost kind of works like an open space. Somebody can present a place where they're stuck, people can vote on those ideas, and then they can jump into breakout rooms and they can chat about those things and hopefully get a couple of actions out of it. Now the feedback was really good when I used the tool, but I really started from who's going to be the audience and what problem do they have. And the problem that I was really focused on for this was in the world of doing organizational change or change in organizations, people who do that kind of work tend to put themselves last. So I've been in this space for a while and I see all these posts about change agents who are tired and frustrated and they can't make things work in their organizations and they always put themselves last. And this was the opportunity to help put themselves first by getting some insights and some ideas from their peers. So I started off with what the pain was and the pain was well, we always put ourselves last. We don't take any time to try to figure out, you know, maybe I'm not in the right career. Maybe I'm just not in the right company. Maybe I love the work I'm doing, but I just don't want to be in this country or this city anymore. And I just need to make a clean break. So the problem is people are stuck and they don't know how to get unstuck. So the market product fit test was basically creating a very, very small, quick application that would allow people to um, uh, collaborate and help each other get unstuck. So there's a template in the links in the description below where you can find this thing and just keep it simple. Just talk about, you know, when you talk about the problem that you think you're solving for customers, it's a hypothesis. So until you've actually got people using the software, you know you've solved their problem. So it's really important to talk about what those things are and then how they solve those problems today. Because like I said, the idea that you have, whatever piece of software that you want to build with no code, odds are it already exists out there and there's already a bunch of people using it. So how are you going to what, what's going to be your differentiator in the market? So think about that first. The next is thinking a little bit more about your personas. So there's a million ways to do personas. This is the way I like to do them because I don't want to get into any of the technical stuff on the podcast, like you should use this canvas or this template or this type of idea. But when you just think about it logically, what is a persona? It's somebody who's got a problem and a need. They might be doing a bunch of workarounds to solve this problem today. 
what's in it for them. Just very, very simple things. And I like to model these off people I know. So one of the personas that I did for the startup I'm working for was Kathy the coach. And I usually try to give the persona a name like that. And I just started by telling a simple story. So it's Monday morning, Kathy gets up around 6.30 a.m. She goes downstairs and starts the coffee and then goes into the basement, logs on to her system, and she really wants to see what her week is gonna look like this week. And more importantly, she wants to make sure she's got everything set for all of her appointments today. So after she checks that stuff, she, she's gonna jot down a couple of notes just as reminders so she doesn't forget to ask the client these particular questions based on something from a previous session. She goes up, she grabs her coffee, has a shower, gets ready, eats breakfast, comes down and then starts her day. So she's already ready to start the day. So she wants to look at her first appointment. She wants to transcribe the notes that she wrote on paper. So she has everything and a record in the system. And then she wants to be able to start the call right from the software. So that's just an example of a simple story. But once you start doing that, you'll notice any of the verb phrase, phrases are things that could potentially be features. So where I talked about trying to find the problem solution fit and how they may solve this problem today, in our case, we might have a coach that is using three or four different pieces of software to do things. They may be managing their calendar in one application and their tasks in another one. They might have notes on paper and they might have a CRM system where they're tracking contacts to send emails and stuff like that. So it's very important to understand what their day is like, especially the environment that they're working in. I was working for one organization that was building healthcare software and we actually had a team go to the healthcare facility so they could see what the nurses were actually doing. And we found out that the nurses were working on really, really old technology. And this was probably 10 years ago or so, but the technology they were working on was 20 years old at the time. And they were working on these tiny CRT, like yellow grayscale old monitors. And the team had been building for best practice 1024 by 768. And this was before all the responsive design and all the fancy web stuff from today. But the insight was when you see the environment that your potential customers or your existing users are working in, you're more likely to have empathy for them and you're more likely to figure out what problems they're trying to solve and how best you can build the software for them to be able to solve that problem. Next up is creating a simple product canvas. And I know I'm doing these sections kind of in order, but there really is no order. There's so much fluidity between personas and your product canvas and your ideas and the story that you wanna tell. Um, there's a Miro template in the description and you can visualize all this stuff kind of in one spot. I find it a lot easier to use whiteboards and put this stuff on, up on the wall, but it's not like you're going to finish step one, you're going to move on to step two. What you do with your product canvas and your personas and things like that and the changes you make and the interviews you do with customers or insights you collect from surveys is going to change all those types of things. So anyway, the product canvas should be something that's very, very simple. You should have a rough idea of a eight second elevator pitch. So if somebody walked into the elevator and you were going one or two floors up, which is about eight seconds, I guess, by the time the doors close, how would you explain to them what this thing does? So have a short elevator pitch that clearly explains why this solution exists. So I like to go along this route instead of saying what market and what cohort and what this, that, and the other, all these technical terms, doesn't matter. In eight seconds, you should be able to explain what this thing does and who it does it for. So that's one part of your product canvas. The other part of your product canvas is what existing solutions exist today that would be competing with mine. And the next one would be what are the bullet points of my differentiators? So given that there's this competition now with some other things that are similar, what would make my solution different from the other ones that are out there? What's my potential market size? So who am I going after? Are, am I going after a niche market? Am I going after a broad market? But just in very, very basic, simple terms, what is this product going to look like and who is it going to provide value for? Back when Lean Startup became popular, this idea of creating a landing page was all the rage. So I went to a Lean Startup workshop, uh, 2011, I guess, or somewhere around there, and that was the big thing. There were sites called LaunchRock and Unbounce, and 
I'm not even sure if those are still out there. They must still be out there. But back then, you could fake somebody out with a landing page. You could put something up there that says, here's the problem, here's how it's gonna solve, sign up with your email address, and then we'll notify you when our public beta is open or something like that. And pretty quickly, consumers uh, keyed into, oh, that's a bunch of vaporware, nothing exists. So you may have heard the term MVP getting thrown around. And back then, a landing page as an MVP was a viable option because it was a new thing. Nobody is getting hooked by those things anymore. So your MVP should be something that's a minimal set of features that's gonna try to solve the problem that you defined earlier in a simple way. Doesn't mean you have to build the whole thing. You might just have a nice little shiny no-code application that's a Google form or an Airtable form or something that's collecting some data from people and spitting something out. Whatever that is, it should provide some piece of value to help you validate that somebody is actually interested in your product. The ultimate flattery of somebody being interested in your product is when they start paying for it. So if you get people that say, oh my God, that sounds so awesome, tell me when it's ready and I will totally subscribe to it, they are totally not going to subscribe to it. When they put cash on the table or digital currency in your PayPal account, um, that's when they are actually interested in your product. So a product canvas can help you quickly create a landscape of what that is going to look like. You don't have to worry too much exactly about what your pricing model is going to be. The most important thing is on that product canvas, write down all the assumptions you have and how you're going to validate or invalidate them. And then once that's done, what steps are you gonna take next to evolve it? All right, so that is a short and sweet episode. Like I said, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this stuff, but you really need to think about the problem you're trying to solve, who you're trying to solve it for, how do they currently solve that problem today, and a short, small, punchy product canvas that's gonna hold the important things like what your short elevator pitch will be if you had to explain it to people, the market you think you're gonna play in, a high level list of potential features and differentiators and possible competitors that are out there. You can probably hammer this stuff off in an afternoon easily because like I said, the idea has probably been rattling around in your head for a long time. As soon as you put it on paper, things start to become clear. So again, check the description for links to some Miro boards that have some templates that you can use. And there's a billion of them out there. So I'm gonna put uh, other links in the description for the business model canvas, the value proposition canvas, and a couple of other useful tips so you can at least sort out all that boring stuff before you actually get in and start building stuff. I'm Jason Little. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Build Stuff. Remember to hit like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or subscribe in your favorite podcast listening tool thingamadoodle. And I'll see you next time.